the technique of radical orchiectomy. The relevant anatomic landmarks related to the incision are the pubic tubercle medially and the anterior superior iliac spine laterally. The incision generally should be made approximately two centimeters lateral encephalad to the pubic tubercle, overlying the approximate location of the external inguinal ring. The incision should extend along a longer's line for approximately five to seven centimeters depending upon circumstances. The incision can be carried onto the scrotum for large tumors. The subcutaneous tissue is incised with electrocautery. The incision is carried down to the level of the external abdominal oblique aponeurosis. The external inguinal ring is identified. The roof of the inguinal canal is opened along the aponeurotic fibers, extending from the external inguinal ring to the area overlying the approximate location of the internal inguinal ring. The genital femoral nerve generally lies on the anterior aspect of the spermatic cord and should be dissected free from the external spermatic fascia and associated cremasteric muscle fibers. The nerve subsequently is retracted out of harm's way. Gentle blunt dissection is used to circumscribe the spermatic cord, taking care not to injure the floor of the inguinal canal. The cord is subsequently ligated with a quarter inch Penrose drain. The testicle is delivered into the inguinal canal via a combination of gentle traction on the cord in conjunction with a pushing motion from the base of the scrotum towards the inguinal canal. Thus, delivering the testicle into the incision with invagination of the base of the scrotum into the surgical field. Dartos and gubernacular attachments between the tunica vaginalis and the base of the scrotum are incised with a combination of blunt and electrocautery dissection, thus freeing the testicle from the invaginated scrotal wall. Proximal dissection of the spermatic cord is accomplished with a combination of blunt and electrocautery dissection. This is carried to the internal inguinal ring 
by incision of cremasteric muscle fibers and any remaining external spermatic fascia. One should be able to identify the peritoneal reflection in this location. Further proximal dissection should allow identification of the divergence of the vas deferens and the spermatic cord proper. I prefer to ligate the vas deferens and spermatic cord separately. Non-absorbable suture is utilized, leaving long tails to aid with dissection during subsequent retroperitoneal lymph node dissection. Additionally, I prefer to doubly ligate the cord to avoid significant retroperitoneal hematoma that can be associated with inadequate vessel ligation. If placement of a testicular prosthesis is desired, it should be placed at this time. After thorough irrigation and meticulous assessment of hemostasis, the external abdominal oblique fascia is closed with running absorbable O suture. The subcutaneous tissue is closed with 2O absorbable suture. We prefer to close the skin with running 4O absorbable suture in a subcuticular fashion. 